What's going on everybody? Just like that, another month has gone by. Welcome to What's On My Deck. We are talking about August. August was an awesome month. Honestly, it's usually the dog days. I kind of prefaced that before when we were talking about July and the preparation for August. It was that way. You know, both largemouth and smallmouth, they're not exactly schooled up. When you're talking largemouth, a lot of those went shallow, thicker stuff or out deeper and you have to go more offshore for them. Starting to school up obviously around the country when you have current stuff like that, you're gonna have that. Up here in Minnesota where I've been lately, we're dealing with natural lakes. So a lot more like Florida fishing, up north fishing in your natural bluegill crawfish style lakes. We've been fishing for both largemouth and smallmouth. So I'm gonna break this down into two parts. We'll start largemouth. Uh, again, it's just the dog day. So it's a great time just run around, stay on top of fish, a lot of junk fishing. Honestly, it's a junk fishing type of year as opposed to September, October, and even November when these fish are gonna really start to school up. Uh, if you're lucky enough to be able to fish for them in November, oftentimes we are not up here up north. But still, if you are, those fish are starting to school up. They're getting ready for winter, exciting months to come. But at the same time, they've had a bunch of forage, uh, abundance of forage out there. The fish have been getting fat. And when you do get bites, they've been big ones, as long as you're willing to fish for them. So let's get into it. Large mouth, what's on my deck? Very first thing I got when it's talking about largemouth fishing is a new setup that I've been using. I've been slowly making the transition as I've been getting them into a lot of these new NRX Plus rods. I'm infatuated with them. I know in the past in these, I've talked about G Loomis rods and Shimano rods. You know, G Loomis, I had that old school, uh, very top of the line, in my opinion, when it comes to dragging, finesse, spinning rods, all that kind of stuff. Uh, good old American technology. At the same time, I also like the Japanese uh, style of developing rods, the JDM stuff, the stuff coming out of Japan, like the Shimano X Pride, the po Poison Adrena. What I found in the new NRX Plus is the perfect combination of that. So as these rods are starting to show up, I've been going back and forth, messing with different ones for the perfect thing. In the past, I was using a 7.2 medium heavy X-Pride to do my flipping, like my milfoil flipping for both tube craw, you know, fighter jigs, stuff like that. It's actually something that Seth himself got on, got me doing a few years ago instead of the old school seven and a half heavy. I just don't have the build for that, man. I can whip around a little seven, seven, one, seven, two medium heavy rod. I feel like I get the bait more action, but I pin those fish. I don't have to have such a big hook set. I just pin and reel. A lot like what we've developed and done with spinning rods, we're starting to do to bait casters. You can see I'm running that chartreuse braid, floral carbon leader. So let's get into the setup. I, I, I think I found it. And this is the G Loomis NRX Plus 853C Jig Worm Rod. This is a extra fast action, medium heavy rod. A little bit stiffer than medium heavy, uh, but still parabolic enough and has that true medium heavy bend, which is awesome for flipping this jig. I use this on boat docks. I use this on milfoil. I'm using a Shimano Metanium. This is an XG8 speed. Again, I'm flipping, set the hook. I want to be able to get that fish reel and get them out of there fast. Straight 40 pound Seeger uh, Power Pro SS V2 braided line. You can see that's the chartreuse stuff. Why not? I'm using an FG knot and then running a 20 pound Seeger Invisex floral carbon leader. So why not use the braid? Uh, the fish can't see it, but I can. It's just a benefit if they pick it up and move it if my line hops just a little bit. I know I have a fish on there. Uh, that's my first setup right there. And that's the new NRX Plus 853C as a jig worm rod, as a jig boat dock rod, milfoil rod, pretty awesome. All right, next up let's stay with the flipping this rod right here since i got it a new addition to the nrx line of course this is the nrx plus but this is a new addition to the line and this is an mbr rod meg bass rod is what that stands for from the g loomis line this is a 903 which is 76 medium heavy rod it's it's a very parabolic fast action rod not extra fast i was using this to flip like a little tube cross style bait i think this is a, a rains same concept as a tube craw a staple in northern minnesota uh, all of minnesota for that matter I'm using a half ounce Wu Tungsten flipping weight. I have the new uh, owner wide gap jungle ringed hook. The rod, again, the 903, very parabolic. I'm using this thing for chatterbaits. I'm using it for flipping uh, milfoil, you know, when I want that little bit longer. I don't necessarily want this rod up on docks because I like that 7-1, so it's kind of a good in between. But if I'm just out straight flipping in the grass, this thing's perfect. Very parabolic bend on it. Again, I'm using the exact same reel I was in the last one, the Shimano Metanium. This is the XG, so I can pick up line quick. 40 pound Power Pro SSV2 Chartreuse Braid to a 20 pound Seeger Invisex Floral Carbon Leader. This rod, I'll use it a lot. Like I said, I can use this for heavy chatter bait and 
you know, thick vegetation, chatter bait, and I'm using it for throwing big paddle tail swim baits on ledges, any of that kind of stuff. Jerky J, offshore swim, anything I need some heavy, a big spinner bait, any of that kind of stuff. And then of course, flipping and punching and, and just a good slop rod. This one's it right here. All right, next up in the largemouth, we're gonna stick with the heavy vegetation and we're going with the frog. This is the brand new 10,000 fish from Catch Coast, the 10,000 fish tataki frog. One very unique thing I wanna show you about this frog, outside of the fact that it has, you know, two different kind of skirting materials right here, which I, I really like that. Their color patterns are great. The frog's nice and soft, but if you look, all other frogs that I know of have the weight on the body. This is actually has it molded to the shank of the hook which lets this, this frog walk extremely good, but also there's nothing there between that and the hooks. There's absolutely nothing there to prevent that fish from, from not getting these hooks. And that's what I like about it. I think it's unique. I think it helps the bait walk, cast, and definitely uh, better hook penetration. So the new tataki frog, uh, they've been destroying it everywhere. We've been throwing it, pretty awesome. My setup for this is a uh, NRX Plus. This is my prototype from about a year and a half, two years ago now. You can tell I've been beating the brakes off of this thing. Everything's the same with this as the 904 MBR that I know, except for this still has the old G Loomis reel seat as opposed to the new one, which I really like the new one. Uh, I didn't think I there's a way to improve on it, and they, they definitely did. This so this is the 904, a little bit heavier than that 903, a little bit stiffer. Uh, definitely like using this for like heavy vegetation, slot fishing. Of course, throwing a frog, maybe floral carbon flipping where I need a little bit more stiffer rod. Using that fast action, the power pearl cuts through the braid. This is just an awesome setup. Fish go shallower and thick or deeper this time of year up shallow sometimes where you don't think there's even any water under there the thickest cheesiest mat it can catch the biggest bass so definitely have to have a frog when it comes to largemouth fishing in the month of august uh last but not least on the largemouth side is going to be a little bit of finesse now i should bring it up i'm going to talk about a drop shot on the smallmouth side so that goes either which way you know if i'm fishing largemouth i have a drop shot on the deck you know maybe something like this like a biospawn worm a robo worm on it something like that if i'm fishing for smallmouth then I, I probably have like a little darter style bait or some uh, you know jackal crosstail shad something of that variety a little swim bait uh, in this case for largemouth here i'm using an old-fashioned jig worm something that we've done up here in minnesota for a long time i'm using the biospawn worm right here i just love the color green pumpkin chartreuse tail built in like that. It's so perfect it fits the outcast tackle money jig this is a little eighth ounce money jig this is the original ned rig for us something that we used here a long time to catch a lot of bass and still do fishing weed lines rock pile stuff like that my rod is the brand new G Loomis NRX Plus. This is the 872, which is a 7.3 medium action jig worm rod. If I had to pick just one spinning rod out there, this is the one. I can do almost everything except maybe throwing hair jigs and stuff like that with it. This is also my largemouth drop shot rod. Um, I'll use the DSR rod for smallies, but we'll get into that in a second. Uh, with the new Spiral X, this is just a, a, a meat stick, but it's got a ton of tip on it. You can throw everything on this rod, spinning rod, largemouth, spotted bass, smallmouth. It just catches them. Wacky worm drop shot. Again, everything. I'm using the new Shimano Accents 4000. I love this as much as I loved the one they had out before. I love them both. The Shimano Accents is just great. It fits just like 100 and something yards of line. It's perfect. So I can switch out my braided line a couple times a year, you know, just so it doesn't get sticky coming off the spool. You know, so much using electronics, I'm trying to throw at fish. I don't want my line to be getting sticky and wore out. I want new fresh lines so to come off. I just think the Accents makes more sense. And the 4000 size, I get emails dms on this a lot i use it because i can cast further i can pick up line quicker and it's got a beefier drag less line twist there's just too many reasons why not to again we're using braid to a floral carbon leader i'm using 10 pound power pro ssv2 and to this i think i actually got 12 pound seager in Vizex floral carbon leader and that's strictly because i was fishing lake minnetonka last and there's a lot of zebra mussels in the milfoil and uh, on the coontail so uh, just a little bit thicker line than maybe i generally do for a lot of spinning rod applications but that is my finesse setup for largemouth so now that we got largemouth done let's hop into smallies all right getting into smallmouth Definitely, I'm not gonna say my favorite. I've made a lot of money chasing largemouth bass. I love them equally. I like whatever bass is biting my line and let me reel them in. But at the same time, I definitely, y'all know, have a soft spot for the smallmouth bass. So let's get into it. But again, like I wanna reiterate, uh, some of these baits will work for largemouth as well. These are just usually the ones that I have on my deck 
in August that I had the most success on. So I might revert back to the largemouth just a little bit because a lot of these lakes have both smallies and larges. Uh, very first, the old Ned rig. Right here, I'm using the brand new Outcast Tackle. And the, it's not brand new, it's Outcast Tackle, perfect Ned head. And the Ned rig that I helped design for Outcast Tackle, used by a lot of great anglers across the country. And at the same time, this is the brand new quarter ounce size. I've been using this a lot on deep schools. I noticed that all the fish that I was catching smallies up here were coughing up orange crawdads. And this is when I start to switch over to this particular bait. But again, I, I talk about it a lot. It catches large most small most spots. If they eat crawdads, they will eat this. It's the 10,000 fish Sakoshi bug. It's got that same stretch X plastic that we all love when we're Ned rigging and put on this big quarter ounce with that two watt hook. It's got plenty of plastic to get this bait up with that rounded head. I'm using the same rod that I was using for the jig worm and that, but this is you know the previous version of the NRX, the G Loomis NRX 872 jig worm rod 7.3 medium action i'm using the previous version of the shimano accents 4000 so not a lot changing between my jig worm rod and my ned rig rod except for i want that backbone a lot of people in their ned rigging use a soft rod that i don't do that i use a ned rig kind of like i would a tube i power fish power fish it it ain't a get bit bait for me as much as it is a catch big smallmouth bass in the right areas bait for me so that's my setup the ned rig let's get into the drop shot again this would be another bait that would easily switch over to largemouth might switch up my rod a little bit but a weightless piece of plastic is always deadly especially on finicky fish that you can find a lot in august during the dog days but in this case this is my drop shot rod that i've been running with this is the brand new nrx plus 822s dsr rod i use this rod for open water smallmouth drop shotting only and i also use it for brush pile fishing if i'm not dealing with that big a fish if i'm in a place like sam rayburn i was using the 872 and even that proved to not be enough but at the same time if i'm fish for spots or just regular size largemouth bass and smallies in brush piles it's a great rod because it's real limber i get over the top of it i can keep them on instead of setting them overpowering that fish and hooking them into the branches and the ropes and all the other stuff that's down there. Instead, this rod lets the fish have a little bit more power, but I keep them hooked and they find their way out of the brush. So I, I love it, but especially for open water drop shot fishing for smallmouth, it's great. I'm just using a little owner mosquito hook, a size one owner mosquito hook, 3 a ounce Wu Tungsten cylinder drop shot weight. The DSR rod, which is a 610 meg medium. It's got a lot of power, but she's soft. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a rod to hook them and keep them hooked and land that fish when you might have some nicks in your line with zebra mussels. Speaking of line, we're using 10 pound Power Pro SSV2 to an eight pound Seeger Invisex fluorocarbon leader. That's my smallie drop shot rod, and this time of year, this is putting a lot of weight in the boat. Let's talk about the bait. I switched the bait a bunch. Like I said earlier, it could be a swim bait. Um, I use a half shell. There, I got so many of them, it probably doesn't matter as much, but one thing I'm doing is using the active target. If they're being picky with the bait I'm giving them that day, then I'm constantly switching it up. Lately, we've had stained water, and I've been throwing this bright chartreuse one at it. It helped me during the Minnesota bound shoot we just had, catch a big five pounder for that shoot, and they're being picky pretty quick and I've been leaning on it. Maybe it's a bait that they're not seeing a lot. Uh, a good buddy, Charles Waldorf, who's also an awesome photographer, is making these for me. I believe they're called Bass Crack and I get it. They like it. Very similar to that of a crosstail shad style bait, uh, but just kind of unique colors, good size. Uh, that's my setup. That's my drop shot rod. August, small malt bass, large malt bass, doesn't really matter. You can catch them on top water. Fish are starting to school a little bit. You got bait going to the surface. Picky fish just looking to destroy something up as the water starts to clear. This bait's gonna do, gonna do some work. You might not get a lot of bites on it, but you're gonna get the right ones and it works all across the country. I'm using uh, Evergreen SB125, one of my favorite walking baits I can cast at a country mile. I'm using a Poison Adrena. This is the 611 Medium Plus. Awesome top water rod, awesome meg jerk bait rod. One of them I haven't yet found the replacement or haven't got my hands on a replacement yet. We're gonna talk about it. I think I found one that I'm gonna be liking a lot. But I mean, this is just a great rod. If you can get your hands on the Poison Adrena, do it, because you're gonna love it. I'm using a Shimano Cronarch 150XG MGL spool, the Shimano Cronarch. I don't use them a ton, but when it comes to casting light stuff or casting stuff a long ways, that Shimano Crown Arc will get the job done. I can almost spool this thing when I throw it, which is hugely important. If you're sitting there and all of a sudden they start busting, you know, 120 feet away from you, you want to be able to get a bait and get it to them and have a chance at catching those fish as fast as you can. So this gets the job done. I'm using 
30 pound regular power pro it casts a long way that's again what i'm looking for it casts a long way and i actually have a little 20 pound seeger invisex fluorocarbon leader and that's just to simply maybe make the bait ride a little bit but most importantly when they do whack it or the bait falls i pull it away too quick it doesn't get tangled up in the braid braid has a tendency to hang up on the hooks instead the fluorocarbon kind of keeps it away from there so that i can keep walking even if they miss it the first time because so many times you catch them after they blow up the first time so uh, that's my setup for that. Let's talk about the meat and potatoes. This time of year, smallmouth and largemouth, I absolutely love throwing a football jig at them. If largemouths are staying offshore for you and they haven't gone up like they will here in the next couple months, but talking about August, there are a lot of them to get plucked off the rocks. I'm using the new Outcast Tackle Elite Football Jig. This thing is bad to the bone. It's got the right O'Shaughnessy hook. It pegs them. I can use straight 15 pound fluorocarbon, make a super long cast, and I mean, top of the mouth, pluck them and get them back in. This comes skirted. I ended up taking the skirt off and I was throwing just a little, you know, Yamamoto hula grub on there. I think I was fishing for smallies, uh, trying to get some bites, but I've been using the same jig now for a little bit. I love how the paint stays on there, even though it gets all chipped up and stuff like, or doesn't get all chipped up, even though it's been banging against rocks here for the last couple of weeks. My setup, brand new, G Loomis. NRX Plus 873C CRR, which stands for Carolina Rig Rod. Um, we sell a ton of these. I don't know if we necessarily always sell them just because they're a Carolina Rig Rod. They're an awesome Carolina Rig Rod, uh, but at the same time, they are a phenomenal structure jig rod. Um, biffle heads, football jigs, mag shaky head, any of that kind of stuff. Offshore, um, awesome rod. I even use this sometimes flipping straight floral carbon and stuff like that, like a Texas rig. It's just a good rod. It's balanced well. It's, it's a medium heavy, but it's a heavy, medium heavy. Medium heavy tip, heavy backbone behind it. Like the 872, it's oddly familiar. The 73872 and the 73873 spinning rod bait caster, two of my favorite G Loomis rods uh, ever built, actually. Love this one. Again, this is the NRX Plus. I'm using Shimano Metanium XG, straight 15 pound Seeger Invisex Floral Carbon. Again, I'm dragging the jig with the rod. I feel the bite. I want to reel down and be able to catch up quick, hence the eight speed reels. That's my football jig rod. Both largemouth and smallmouth and spotted bass. Anything will eat a football jig. Last but not least, we talked about this last time, and jerk bait for me is generally current or pre spawn. Small mouse will always eat it because they use their eyes, something I've learned more and more and more, and something that Act Target now from Lawrence has showed me even more. Forward facing sonar, we talked about this in the July edition. The rods I keep on my deck got me a new rod for it that I'm really in love with. I'm actually excited to get one more power up. I think that'll be a good topwater rod as well. Uh, but this is the G Loomis NRX Plus 842 MBR. Seven foot medium action. It's a soft jerk bait rod. It casts this new Shimano World Minnow a ton, which like I said, if you just listen to this thing, the weight transfer system in this thing casts that jerk bait further than any other jerk bait that I've ever seen on the market before. It's been fun to play with these. Can't wait to get my hands on more colors and more variety as they continue to come out. I'm using straight 10 pound Seeger Invisex Floral Carbon and I got a Mentanium DC and XG. Again, I'm using the rod and part the action. So when I get the bite, I just want the gear ratio to be able to pick up on them real quick. The eight speed XG DC and I use a DC because I don't need a DC to cast better. It definitely helps with beginners and all that, but you gotta remember as you bump up into the Shimano line as well, and you start getting into such great reels like top of the line stuff like metaniums and you add DC to it. Now you're talking about, man, I got that 30 mile an hour wind blowing straight in my face. It's sleet and it's early pre-spawn. I'm on Grand Lake, it's nasty. And I need to throw a jerk bait into the wind to those fish to try to get those bites my DC is gonna allow me to be able to throw that further and more accurate with less backlashes throughout the day. And of course, the, the World Minnow Jerkbait, one that I've been gaining a lot of confidence in flat and fast, the flash boost just gives me more of a bite. As the water starts to clear, I'm looking to even land more and more bass on this. And with using Active Target, I can use this to play with fish that I see are suspended. Kind of a big deal, a bass that I never really ever targeted before, I'm starting to target now. Still. Super unsuccessful a lot of the times, but one out of 15, I turn 
maybe more, depends on their mood. But it's a bass that I never knew was there that I always just went past, I could never catch before. Didn't even know they were there. Now I'm seeing them and I keep the bait on my deck to maybe turn them and get an erratic action. Even if it fires them up, sometimes it fires them up, they move behind it, they go away, I throw a drop shot in there and I get them. So gotta keep a, a jerk bait on the deck, especially now with forward looking sonar. Love in this 842, I can't wait for my 843 to show up. I think that'll be a good spinner bait rod, swim jig rod top water rod, heavier jerk bait rod. I just am really loving these fast actions that you're getting out of this MBR series uh, with the new G Lumis NRX Plus line. So that's it. That's nine rods. That's the month of August. We are getting into September. I have a big tournament here coming up at Lake Norman. We're sitting really high in the points. Would mean a lot to me to go have a good one. We'll have a full report of that when we get back. And then it's my favorite time of year, end of September, the month of October. We'll be guiding day in and day out, putting good folks on giant bass. I want you to all tune in and I'll be explaining to everybody what we're doing and showing the exact baits that we're putting them in the boat. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe. Please share this kind of stuff. We're going to keep them coming. This was What's on My Deck, the month of August. Tight lines.